We like to think of precious works of art as timeless, that Leonardo da Vinci's Mona Lisa will smile for centuries to come, but what happens when the march of time wears on and the colors fade? Well, that's when science steps in. Hey guys, Julia here for D News. We like to think of art as a way to make ourselves immortal. We'll remember Da Vinci's name because of The Last Supper. We'll remember Van Gogh in the bright yellow of his sunflowers. But time is a cruel mistress, and so is moisture, soot, and light, the effects of which will dull and damage priceless works of art. So art restoration is as old as art itself. As soon as the paint on Da Vinci's Last Supper was dry, it started to crack. And so over the course of a few centuries, it's been repainted, glazed over, and touched up numerous times. Many other famous works of art, including The View of Delft by Johann Vermeer, have been retouched dozens of times over the years. Sometimes the change is a restoration to preserve or fix a damaged piece. Other times a change is made to reflect the changing times. So the art you see in a museum may have been touched by more than a few hands. But that's part of the problem. Art restorations that seemed like a good idea at the time turned out to be disasters when new information is revealed years later. One example, according to Yale Scientific, old conservation manual suggests in covering the entire painting in wood ash and then wiping it off with water, a process that caused an ultimately alkaline substance harmful to the painting to form. So the standby of restoration nowadays is to ensure that you do no harm to the work and that wherever possible, anything you do could be reversed by a later generation. In some cases, the passage of time means the accumulation of dirt and grime, as seen with the Sistine Chapel, which underwent a massive restoration that began in the late 1980s. The solvent used to clean the chapel, called AB50, is made from bicarbonate of sodium and ammonium and carefully applied by brush. After sitting for a few minutes, it would be wiped away along with any grime and a layer of glue. And that layer of glue is a matter of some controversy. Some historians claim it was Michelangelo's doing, others claim it was a disastrous restoration made years later. It's hard to tell what the artist's original intent was. It's not like there were photographs back then. Conservationists had to rely on what people were writing about when the frescoes were first displayed. And that's one of the hard things to know about art that's been around for a while. Is a grime or varnish or pigments put there by the painter? Luckily, with modern science, conservationists can figure out some of the answers without destroying priceless works of art. Great art should always see the light of day, but sometimes the light is the cause of the art's demise in a process called photodegradation. Basically, the energy from light, especially UV light, causes the chemical bonds and dyes to break. This essentially makes the colors fade, which is one of the reasons you're not allowed to use flash photography in a museum. But light can be a solution too. Many restoration attempts start with an X-ray or infrared imaging of a piece. Infrared imaging works by detecting all of the wavelengths of light that the painting absorbs and reflects, which is more than the human eye can see. Some of these infrared wavelengths penetrate deeper than visible light. By getting past the paint, these infrared wavelengths can see other layers of the work, revealing underdrawings and previous versions of the work, which can help tell restorers about the artist's original intent. Like one recent analysis by engineer Pascal Cote revealed that da Vinci changed his mind a lot. One painting, Lady with an Ermine, went through three different versions before he decided on the iconic white ermine we know today. The painting was analyzed by a new technique called layer amplification method pioneered by Cote himself. The technique uses intense pulses of light to see between the layers of paint. Cole told the BBC that with this technique, he's discovered that Leonardo is always changing his mind, that he is someone who hesitates, he erases things, he adds things, he changes his mind again and again. Just as light can damage and even reveal art, light can even breathe life into old work. In the late 1970s, Harvard University had murals by famous painter Mark Rothko hanging in their cafeteria. Not surprisingly, after years of damage from light and college kids, the paintings went into storage. When they reemerged in 2014, the paintings were badly faded. Rather than turn to traditional restoration methods, Harvard turned toward technology. After finding the original colors from old photographs and other paintings, a computational photographer from MIT, Ramash Raskar, designed an algorithm to match the old colors. Then those colors were beamed at the paintings from wall-mounted projectors. It produced the illusion that the murals were as bright as the day they were painted. As for da Vinci's most iconic piece, The Last Supper, thanks to centuries of wear, bombing, and poor fresco experimentation, it will never again return to its former glory. But maybe technology can bring it back to life in a way. In 2012, a group of scientists from Leonardo III, a Milan-based museum, digitally restored the painting. Without laying a finger on the fragile fresco, they reconstructed it through high-definition photographs. Painstakingly reimagined in pixels rather than pigments, the new digital version revealed details like a salt shaker that 
appears to have been knocked over by Judas, or maybe even a shadow of the artist himself. Leonardo da Vinci was a Renaissance man. In his time, there were no clear boundaries between the arts and the sciences, it was all within the pursuit of knowledge. He might have found math as eloquent and beautiful as any of his masterpieces. Mathematician Tara Long discusses a study that shows how math can be perceived as a beautiful piece of art in the brain in this video right here. And while those subjects did show a significantly lower emotional response to the equations, a handful of them were still capable of finding their beauty, even with no understanding of what they actually mean. So what do you think? Should art be restored if it's damaged, or should the passing of time be included in how we see a piece? Sound off down in the comments below. While you're there, don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons so you don't miss a single DNews episode.